Um, here at the trip to Jerusalem, we're faced with a very, very old building. The building itself is centuries old, much of it very different in date because of its development over the years. But the oldest parts of it, cutting back into the sandstone of Crassel Rock, can probably be said to exceed a thousand years old in age. Any kind of building of this antiquity is going to collect a lot, a lot of ghost stories around it of, in a lot of different times. But probably the most intriguing story here, and it's hard to say whether it's even a ghost story, but I think it certainly fits into the category, is the story of the Cursed Galleon. Now the Cursed Galleon, if you go up into the trip to Jerusalem here, up into the Rock Lounge, you'll see it there in a glass display case. It's an old, centuries old, wooden model of a classic galleon, a sort of tall ship that you would expect from the age of piracy. The only problem with it is it's probably one of the filthiest items you'll ever see on the planet. It's covered in dust and ancient cobwebs, the wood is absolutely blackened with stains and tar of probably decades if not centuries of cigar and pipe smoke. It's totally uncleaned. That's because the curse that is attached to the curse galleon goes that if anybody were to ever move it, were to ever attempt to clean it, that they would be dead within a year. Now, around about 10 to 15 years ago here at the trip to Jerusalem, some refurbishment work had to take place. Obviously, ancient listed buildings like this take a lot of care. So the pub was shut for a few weeks while that took place. Clearly, something like the Cursed Galleon, which was very, very old, needed to be protected. However, they had a problem in that none of the builders who were working here would go near it or touch it. They believed in the curse, and as I say, this was probably less than 20 years ago. So, in light of this, um, a spiritualist lady was brought in to deal with the curse. She took down the galleon itself with her own hands, saying prayers and supplications and such like around it, and finally she placed it into the glass display case where you'd be able to see it now above the rock bar in the trip to Jerusalem here. It's stayed in there ever since because now nobody needs to touch it, needs to clean it, needs to tinker with it in any way. If anything needs to be done, pick up the case and it's moved away. Now, I did consider what would happen to the spiritualist lady who'd made it safe, so to speak. Well, I heard nothing about it for quite some time until I had occasion to come back into the trip to Jerusalem here. I was having a beer, chatting with the previous landlord, and I spoke to him about it, and I said that in a sort of macabre fashion, it would be uh, quite good, if you like, if the, if the curse was still true. Could we prove the curse is true? And I said, in a very much a jokey fashion that uh, you know I was quite upset that it wasn't it just would have been nice to think the mystery was true however he did go very quiet and inform me that the lady who had done the prayers and such like over it had actually died about a year later from a road traffic accident 